Hey, what's up YouTube? I just thought I'd give a quick little hello again because I tried um, a YouTube short, but they're like literally 15 seconds and I don't yet qualify to um, do live feeds on my channel yet. But I just thought I would explain why I've been missing for like three weeks now and here's the deal. Leading into the fall and in Canada, in Ontario where I am, things have been opening up and everyone's trying to get some semblance of normalcy or traction in life going back on again, right? And so as part of that, I was part of a team that planned a big street party. It was an outdoor thing. People kept their distance, but you know, people got to say hello and just get out and see each other a little. And that was really nice and I helped plan that. And then my church also reopened and is meeting publicly again. And I had some get ready and lead up towards that as well. Once you add in your jobs and you know, your dinner dishes, walk the dog, lather, rinse, repeat, um, you know, it's a uh, life can get pretty busy pretty quick. And because some of these other things just has such sensitive timelines and deadlines, I've had no choice but to pretty much put all sewing and crafting and YouTube video edits and everything on hold. I actually have quite a bit of video footage that I took this summer and then I had to put it all on hold as I'm just gearing up for fall things and stuff like that, right? So that's the deal. So anyways, I will just say the video that I'm sharing with you today, this is just gonna be me talking to the camera like this, no edits at all and upload because it, I just really am time crunched right now. So one of our, my followers, one of our viewers here did ask if I would make Luna Lappin's dress and um, the little shirt. Let me get the book, hang on. There it is. All right, I thought I had it on, I thought I had it on the shelf, but I didn't. So you see this picture here, this little dress and the little shirt that goes underneath it. This is actually for the mouse, as you can see, right? So it's really, really sweet. The pattern's pretty easy. I'll see if I can find the picture for you in here. And as you can see with an unedited video, this is the closest thing to a live that I can come. And so if that's where we're at right now, that's where we're at, that's okay. Okay, here we go. Wilhelmina's wrap dress. Look at that. Here's what I came up with that I'm gonna make that with. Check out this fabric that I got. I'll move my chair out of the way so I can show you here Look at this. Cool piece of fabric here. Isn't that neat? Do you see the way it's just got so much going on in here at once, right? Like we have this nice little floral print here. Then we have like indigo, navy blue and white there. And then we've got like a softer floral print there and then finally this very country calico like so you see guys this is all going on in here and um, I'll bring my chair back so I got this stuff on sale for like five dollars for the meter five Canadian dollars right and it is um, almost 60 inches wide, it's a wider fabric. It feels like cotton or cotton and polyester, but it said it was unknown fibers, that's why it was so cheap. And I did only buy one meter because this was something I picked up in the summer that was like um, just a, I just thought it was cool. And to be honest, I decided this would have made the coolest looking little peasant style top, just a loose flowy kind of thing. And I realized this, like, well, if I want to do that, I don't have enough fabric. So here's the story. I went back to the fabric store a couple of weeks ago and I had bought this um, six weeks ago, I guess. 
And so I went back to the store with the hopes that I'm like, oh, maybe there's still some left. Maybe it's unusual enough no one else liked it, right? Don't we all tell ourselves these things when we're trying to go back to the store for something? Exactly. So I go back to the store and I combed through that store. Um, the, the big chain store that we have in Canada that I don't know if uh, all my other viewers have heard of, it's called Fabricland. It's a big fabric store chain that carries a little bit of everything. And you know, like any fabric store, if you shop on the sale rack and stuff, you can do pretty good. But if you're just shopping everything like newest release off the rack, it's gonna add up. So I am a fan of the sale rack. And you see my doggie is back here. Hey, Sky. So anyways, um, I went back with the hopes that I could find more of this fabric. And I even had a sales girl help me find the table where these um, sale fabrics were. And I found one of the other bolts of fabric whose print I remember but it wasn't a print I necessarily wanted, but I knew I was in the right area because I was like, oh, I recognize this other bolt of fabric, right? I looked and looked and I checked other sale racks and I checked hidden places. I checked quiltings. I checked everywhere thinking, oh man, if I could just get a little more of this, I could make this cute little blouse and it'd be so cheap. And then you get the bragging rights of saying, I made that so cheap, right? Anyways. None of that worked out. I actually, for the first time in a long time, two weeks ago, when I went to the fabric store, I actually left empty handed. Can you believe that? How many of us can go into a fabric store and resist not even just buying a little bit of thread or a new tape measure? When you sew, when you're a crafter, you can always see potential in something and you can always be replenishing your stash of something. And so the fact that I walked away with nothing in my hands, I was actually pretty proud of that little moment. So that was pretty cool. So anyways, back to Luna Lapin and friends. I have not had much time to get to this because I do have some uh, friends and family, both two very dear people to my life. One of them is immediate next of kin and the other isn't. And they're both very, very ill for very different reasons. And it is occupying some of my time in the background, be it emotional strength and durability um, or time that I'm spending on things that I want to right now because the time won't be there later. Um, I have between that and leading up for fall kickoff and everything, guys, it's just been really busy. And so I've had to put things on hold so I know all my friends here who like Luna Lap, and I know you guys are waiting for the next project, and I do expect that maybe this weekend I can whip off Wilhelmina's little shirt and dress. But this is the fabric that I am looking to do this with. Now, even though this is sort of like my version of a live video, and I am going to post it, I'm going to post it today, which is Thursday, September 16th. If you're willing to be interactive, you know what I would love you to do is comment down below which print or combination of prints because I can fussy cut this, right? Do you know what fussy cutting is? Fussy cutting is if you want to fussy cut something, let me get you a different fabric. Here's a good example. So if you want to fussy cut something, there's a nice little Christmas print here. And let's say you just want these polar bears and you're going to applique them onto something else, right? So fussy cutting is literally that. You fuss to cut and leave enough seam allowances that you can turn under what you need to and then you can hand applique something down. So the idea here is with this, you could fussy cut you know, these bigger chunks or some of the smaller chunks. Let's take a look at the pattern book and see where Wilhelmina's um, little dress pattern is to see parts of her pin tuck top are here. Okay. Can you see that with the light? <laughs> see that? So this is Wilhelmina's wrap dress. That's one part of it there. That's another part of the wrap dress there. 
and all of this page here that's looking to me like it's also wrap dress and pin tuck top so they do need to be somewhat decent pieces but that being said do you guys have a favorite do you do you like the indigo or the prairie floral so yeah here <laughs> we're gonna name the four prints so that if you decide to comment down below what you'd like to see the dress made out of you can cast your little vote on that so we are gonna name this like this large floral makes sense right and this one we will call an indigo floral the smaller one that's almost like a calico print i'm going to call that a prairie floral because it's fun and then honestly guys aside from that it's only the three because the fourth one is this little floral print here that it kind of goes in a long strip right so that'd be great for accessorizing you know what else would be really cool look at this part see it's just such an interesting piece of fabric don't you think but all of this would make a lovely skirt hem or like a waistband or I don't know anyways tell me what you think guys but I think it's a quite a workable fabric for Wilhelmina's dress I do have quite a small assortment like small half meters and stuff but I have a decent enough assortment of white fabrics that I, I'm pretty sure I got something for the top but it's not not really necessary to go through because the white quilting fabrics I have I can grab one to show you that I don't think you can see it on camera as well So for example, this, if I guess, once again, if I create a, <laughs> if I create a shadow or a ledge, I don't know if you can see. Oh, you can see it a little there. So you can see that's like a white fabric with a little diamond cut. And um, I will sometimes go by like, this is all I have of it, right? That's folded. So it's honestly, it's literally a half a meter. So anyways, I was thinking I could maybe use a little bit of that and put that with this. And that's going to be Wilhelmina's shirt and dress. And so it is coming up. Uh, anyways, let me, let me know, guys, what you, if you want to vote down below, let me know. And um, I also just wanted to say, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. For all my subscribers, I have crossed the 100 subscriber mark and I just thank you so much. I am trying to grow this channel so that one day it can be monetized, but I'm willing to just do the journey however long it takes too. I'm not gonna force stuff through before it's meant to be. However, when you watch the YouTube schools, they do say things like, if you can get 100 subscribers, you can get a thousand. If you can get a thousand subscribers, you can get 50,000. And a lot of these YouTube schools say that uh, the first 1,000 subscribers is the hardest to get. That once you have that, it's actually easier to go from a thousand subscribers to 50,000 than it is to go from zero subscribers to a thousand. You guys have helped me get there because I now have 107 subscribers. And again, I just thank you so much. I also thank you for your patience. Well, it just really has been, I just have so much stuff going on at once right now that I, as I'm describing that, um, I'm willing to grow this channel when and where I can. I am invested in it, but I have to match these other responsibilities in my life with my attention as well. So again, guys, just, Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. 
Every video you watch to the end helps my channel grow. Every like you click, every comment you leave, every subscribe. So thanks again, guys. And I will be revisiting sewing. I will have time this weekend. So let me know. I'm definitely using this fabric for the dress. But if you think one of the prints is a little more appealing than the other, I'd love to hear from you. And pretty soon, Little Miss Luna Lappin is going to be doing a little fashion show with her new outfit. And also when I can return to sewing, I do have some supplies. I'm gonna make a few more of the friends from this book. So soon, Luna can throw a party. <laughs> Anyways, seriously guys, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you have a great Friday tomorrow and I hope that uh, I'll catch up with you on the weekend or early next week. Thanks again for watching. Take care guys. Bye.